Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about autism and what I personally would recommend to uh, parents who have a child who developed autism. Now, there are certain things that, unfortunately, I can't really talk about for various reasons related to this topic. So I'm going to keep this fairly basic. But this is what I would recommend uh, for uh, a child who is suffering from autism. First question is, what is different about an autistic brain in a normal brain? One big thing is this. There's a defect in autophagy. Autophagy is a condition where the cells are cleaning up old damaged proteins. It's like a recycler. So if there's a defect in the ability to clean up damaged brain tissue or waste products in the brain or some byproduct in the brain that shouldn't be there, it can leave the brain overly excited and create a lot of cognitive problems. There's also a high incident of low vitamin D in autistic children, low folate, which by the way, low folate allows the cells to be damaged very easily because folate helps protect the DNA from being damaged. So you're having a lot of damage in the brain and a lot of free radical damage and oxidative stress. You're also getting um, some dysfunction in the myelin that's the outer covering around the nerves and brain neurons. So we're getting a dysfunction of that myelin. And there's usually always a related intestinal problem with these kids. Over 90% of the time, they have big swollen bellies. Now there's actually a connection between the digestive system and the brain. It's called the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve works like this. The information going down to the gut from the brain, it's only 10%. The information coming from the gut to the brain is like 90%. So the freeway really brings a lot of uh, information from the gut up to the brain. So I really think there's this missing connection in the gut that needs to be restored, which could be contributing to a lot of problems in the cognitive area. Now, one thing that is known is that a lot of symptoms uh, do occur after breastfeeding when the child is put on formula. However, uh, a lot of kids get autism roughly about age four, but sometimes they get it earlier. Now, in these formulas, they have a lot of things that children can be allergic to, from soy, from the protein in the milk, like casein, to all sorts of other chemicals, not to mention the glucose and the sugar and all the other things they put in there. So the first recommendation I want to say is try to breastfeed your child as long as possible. Okay, I'm not talking about till age 16. I'm just talking about a few years, okay? Next thing is that you must rid gluten from the diet. You are probably already doing this, but gluten just literally tears up the gut in these children and creates all sorts of inflammatory responses. And that can actually greatly affect the brain, chemistry. Next one, rid casein. It's a very common allergy. And a lot of times they put this in the formula. Uh, you wanna avoid gluten and, and casein, okay? Grains and milk products. You may find a huge benefit just from that alone. Next thing, you wanna do some type of detox for heavy metals, specifically mercury. Uh, you can watch other videos on that, um, but mainly I want to just talk about what remedy I would recommend is silica. Silica is a really good natural um, remedy to kind of counter that. Selenium is also one as well. In fact, this is essential. Selenium will bind to a certain protein and act as a very powerful antioxidant, and it will help to uh, lower the effects, the negative effects from heavy metals, especially mercury. Zinc is essential for certain parts of the brain to function, especially those ones that are involved with autistic behavior. The next thing is essential, and if you don't know about this, you need to study up on it, putting your child on the, a healthy keto plan. Why? Because we know there's damage in the brain. So you must use an alternative fuel. I would definitely recommend also exogenous ketones, an MCT oil for sure. You can watch my videos on that. But going on a keto plan, a low-carb diet, 
will allow the brain finally to get fed. So ketones can bypass the damaged part and feed the neurons directly. Glucose cannot do that. So this is very, very important. And you probably see huge changes just from that alone. Now, as far as fasting goes, it's very difficult to have a small child fast, but at the very minimum, maybe you just do three meals and no snacks. That would be very beneficial because the benefits of fasting on your brain are huge. You can actually regrow new neurons when you do fasting. And maybe you just do two huge meals that are very nutrient dense, and uh, that might work as well. You wanna have this child consuming nutrient-dense foods. It might be very difficult, so you might have to do some type of powdered green drink because a lot of times they don't like eating vegetables, but they need the folate, okay? Also, they need a vitamin D. Vitamin D is really important in the brain. It's essential for the immune system, and there's a lot of inflammation going on in the brain as well. Also, vitamin C is very important, and I'm not talking about synthetic ascorbic acid. I'm talking about the full vitamin C complex. Very, very, very important. If you have not seen my other video on the brain and brain chemistry and what to do to support a healthy brain, I put it right here. Check it out.